Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Still got your lollipop headphones. Well, I just think it's really cool. I like it. You look awesome. Um, okay, listen. I'm not holding it like how the cool DJs hold it, but you know. The cool DJs, yeah, that's more like it. Actually, the way they would do it is... Oh, this is how my mom would always... Remember our moms? Like They, they would be like... On the phone? On the phone, but cooking mm-hmm. and like holding a baby and yeah. like doing the mixer, yeah. you know. Yeah, my mom didn't do that. She didn't usually hold a phone up to her ear. Because <laughs> she couldn't hear, honey. She's deaf. And it's a really weird way of you to bring that up, <laughs> to be honest. My mom never used a lollipop headphone All to right. this day. It's a secret dump, so you know what that means. We're going to be answering some listener submitted questions or maybe just one. Here's a good one. Um, uh, my wife won't let me go down on her. What should I do to help ease her into it? She's anxious about it. Well, first of all, I think you should, hmm, you kind of don't want to talk about it. You don't want to over talk about it because then it becomes a stigma. Right. You know, but I guess the question is, should I in the moment tell her, you know, do you want to try it different ways? Like maybe 69 could be like a nice way. So she's distracted with your dong. Yeah. That's an interesting idea. Pretty interesting idea. And that might be something, I don't know how what your relationship is, but it might be better to talk about a little bit before. Right. That's pretty good though, actually. She's dong dong focused and then you get into <laughs> slurping. I think um, <laughs> the way to do it would be to, in um, non-sexual situations, to do the V, the like, all the time, like at breakfast, you know, be like, hey wife, and I think that would probably get her really into it because she'd start thinking about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, I'm trying to think. What's a real way that you could help someone with a particular sexual um, um, insecurity? What is what is a real way? I think your way is actually pretty good. I was going to say, and this is maybe a destructive uh, bit of advice. If this person is a drinker or a pot smoker, Probably drinker even would be better because doesn't pot get you in your head sometimes? Yeah, get them a little drunk. Yeah, we'll just, you know, have some cocktails and then try, you know, maybe get their inhibitions down. But, you know, that's not great um, advice. I mean, I'm not saying tricker. I'm saying like, you know, maybe that would help if you guys had a little bit of wine or something, a hot toddy, a, a, a martini with an olive, you but know, I will say a rum and coke. I, I hope I'm not overstepping something, but I do think that if, if you... Mm, I'm probably going to, maybe this isn't the right thing to say. About to get canceled? I can't wait. What's going on? (laughs) Tell me. I feel like if you don't enjoy that, like something could have happened to you. You might have like an issue or like, I feel you. Maybe you were molested or or, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying she was molested. I I am. I'm saying that. Um, No, I'm not. But I dated a girl once who was so convinced that her vagina was ugly. She always would talk about it, and it really, was, and it was not. Why would she say that? I, well, she was insecure, but I was. But she was like bringing your attention to it, uh, exactly. And I just like, I, it could be something like that too. It could be um, an insecurity that isn't about like a trauma, but about like a she has a, a bad self esteem kind of thing. Or maybe they, it could be both things. I don't know. I guess I wonder with stuff like this. Like he seemed. This person seems like a good guy who's asking because he assumes that she could be getting pleasure that she's not. I mean, I didn't get the vibe just, it was a short question and it was text-based, but I didn't get the vibe from that question that he's like super turned on by it and he's feeling like it's missing. Like that caller we had who was like, if, I, if I'm with a girl and she doesn't That's true. That's bust true. in her mouth, I won't be horny. So <laughs> I, it didn't feel like that. It felt more like I feel like my wife is missing out or I feel selfish as a lover because she goes down on me and... But I guess like, is she, the question for me would be, is she getting sexual pleasure in other ways? Is she, is she sexually gratified or is this a part of a bigger pattern where she's not getting her needs met at all because of her insecurity? You know, because if, if the answer is yes, she is getting off, then maybe she just doesn't, isn't into it and maybe don't push it. Maybe don't do it. She doesn't get that because she doesn't want it. Mm. I wonder what people think who are our listeners. What do you think? Yeah, let me know. I I would let I would say maybe let us both know. <laughs> maybe don't CC Moshe on the. <laughs> don't email. just let Natasha know. Uh, okay, well let's listen to some secrets. Let's then. do it. But we are curious what you think. Yeah, what is a good way? Why would somebody not be into ha- people going down on them? I've had a couple of people like that that I dated who weren't into it, 
And it's nice. They might not have been into you doing it, though. It could be. It could be. It's nice that this person isn't lazy because as a lazy man, you know, it's very easy to be like, oh, really? You're not into that? Great. I don't have to work. I mean, even though it's hot, you're like, you know, there's this thing where you can just like sit back and receive pleasure and you're like, great. You know, so it's nice that this guy's like, no, I want that. But what do you think? Why would a person not want that? Is it trauma? Is it insecurity? Is it just a sexual preference? And what is a good way to ease into the, 69. the, the slurping and the burping? Let us know. Okay, let's listen to a secret. Hi, Moshe. Hi, Natasha. I have a secret that's not really mine. It's a family secret that I'm stuck keeping. Um, so my mom's dead. My grandma just died. But before either of those people passed away, I was told that my cousin's dad is not who he grew up thinking was his father. It's actually my uh, my aunt's ex-husband, who I guess she cheated on her then-husband with and conceived a child. Um, and I really hate this aunt, and I want to make a huge scene and tell everyone, hey, this person's not your dad, but I think that's really inappropriate, but I need to get it off my chest. So... Yeah, my cousin's dad is not who he thinks he is. And I should not tell anyone that information in real life. Thanks. Bye. What do you think? Should you tell people that? Do people no. have the right to know? No, they should no, die ignorant. Should. I think, th- why do you want to be the bearer of the news? Like, just stay mm. out of it. If someone asks you, you can then decide to tell them. But I think in general, you, you and you have to promise yourself to not get drunk. Here's the, here's the issue. Tell everyone some night. Here's the issue with keeping a secret like this. I kind of tend to agree with you. Unless it's a tremendous burden, then I guess tell someone. I, I kind of agree with you with your take, but I have heard that secrets like this are increasingly impossible to keep because of DNA testing because they tell you who you're related to. And all of a sudden, if this guy ever takes a DNA test, he's going to have all these cousins that are not in his family but are in this other guy's family. And he's going to go, wait a minute, is that my dad? And then he's going to ask his family, including this caller, hey, did you know this? And then everybody's either going to have to lie and go, we didn't know, or going to have to be like, yeah, we all knew and we kept it a secret from you. And then he will not forgive his family. So it's a complicated question. Yeah, I I, I think that um, I I agree. Mm. Well, good luck out there. Let's hear another secret. Hi, Motion Natasha. So I have a secret that I haven't told anyone because I honestly think it would ruin my relationship. Um, So I've been dating this guy for like nine months now, and we both come from the same really small town. So small world, but his sister was my first kiss, his younger sister. I doubt she remembers it. And he definitely doesn't know, and I have no intent of ever telling anybody this, but sometimes, like, when we're arguing, in the back of my head, I'll just think, like, oh, well, I've kissed your sister. And it makes me feel a lot better. So, yeah, thank you, guys. Love your podcast. Bye. This is weird, because I have something I needed to tell you. You kissed my sister? No, your brother, Louie. He was my first kiss. (laughs) It was a game of spin the bottle in Rockford, Illinois. I don't know what I was doing there. <laughs> but yeah, and I it's just time for me to tell you. It's a, been a great burden. I'm glad it's off my shoulders. I don't think I would care. Really? Yeah, I, why would... They, I mean, these people sound young. Who fucking cares? You kissed his sister <laughs> once? I mean, what? It was, it's childhood spin the bottle games. My first French kiss was spin the bottle. And it was like, I don't even think I know the girl's name. No, I don't know her name. You don't remember her name? No. I wasn't romantically linked to her. It was a game of spin the bottle. How old were you? I was 12, 11. How old were you? Kiss, not bang. (laughs) What was your first, how old was your first kiss? Real Probably like 12, yeah. Yeah. Were you good at it? I don't remember. I remember we would like lock ourselves in an attic. (laughs) And like with each other and like try to like feel and kiss. I don't want my daughter doing that. Well, unfortunately she's human. So it's probably going to happen. I know. Why did we have a human? We should have waited and had a cyborg. We probably will have a cyborg eventually. She'll probably like fuse some tech into her brain. And maybe she won't need to kiss anybody. She'll just kiss a sim. She'll like make that choice. Yeah, something like that. 
Uh, what I wanted to say about the last caller. Yeah. I think that it's important to tell a family secret if it can help things in some way. Right. If that information. Well, it definitely can because if your dad is not, if your dad has heart disease, not diabetes, and you're doing like a diet regimen to avoid diabetes and not to right. avoid heart disease or whatever. I mean, I'm not a doctor, obviously. I'm close, but you know what I'm saying? Like in that way, yeah, you would want to know who your dad was. But emotionally, that's a, that's an interesting moral question. Is the information you would gain by figuring out who your real father is more important than the emotional fallout you would be, suffer as a result of it? Right. Would you rather drop dead of a heart attack because you had no idea there was congestive heart failure in your uh, family or um, find out that your whole life was a lie? Exactly. All right. You want to hear another secret? Ooh, let's hear one. Let's do it. Hi, Moshe and Natasha. This is for the Secrets Hotline. Um, this is something I don't think I've ever told anybody before. Um, when I was uh, an adolescent male, I'm guessing about 13 years old, is when LimeWire and Kazaa were a big thing. You could download music and videos. Um, and the computer... The family computer was in my bedroom, and so I downloaded quite a bit of pornographic content onto that computer. And in that time, when I was burgeoning sexually and uh, exploring stuff, I did uh, venture down the road of uh, some bestiality videos. Uh, not too many. I'm guessing probably four in total, a couple dog videos and a couple horse videos. Sure. Uh, I've never gone down that road again it's not something i'm interested in going down but i do uh have these memories that i'll have forever um and i was not ever sexually into the animals it was really more that i thought that the women uh were pretty freaky and that did something for me thank you so much oh so there's women yeah jerking off a horse i would say they're doing more than jerking it off natasha i hate to break it to they you. fuck it there's a famous video online the mr hands video that jim norton does a great bit about about a, a video called uh, where a man is being fucked by a horse and he dies as a result of uh the fuckery he dies and you see the moment not you don't see him die but you definitely see the thrust that killed him there's like a moment where you're like oh that does not look like it's supposed to happen. That's online. Everything's online, honey. How can I prevent my child from going online? <sighs> I mean, I think we're past that point. But do you understand that if you see something fucked up like that as, as a young child, that's how... That, you become a jockey? That's No, that's how like... You become uh, a German Shepherd trainer? Kinks happen. That's how you become that Russian lady that was trying to strong arm us into buying a German Shepherd? I'm just saying. I would look... I mean, look... You want to make sure your YouTube's locked. When you're young, you're looking at all that shit. And it's not nece not every person that watched the Mr. Hands video fucks pedigree uh, thoroughbred horses. I'm just saying. Listen, if you have a secret like that, a juicy, hot, no, bestiality not like that. secret. I don't want to hear any more Give of us those. a call. 213-222-8608. If you need advice, uh, shoot us an email, okay? At endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail. This is important. Become a member of our Patreon. We want you to be in our community and you can get hot fat mixtapes dropped by yours truly. More importantly, a dinner party that we are going to be releasing the date of very soon. Heck yeah. So come on by. Be a Patreon member. YouTube, we're there. Apple Podcasts, we're there. Spotify, we're there. Oh, we're is everywhere. that our new catchphrase? And we're just everywhere. Endless Honeymoon, it's everywhere you want to be. Natasha? Yes? I love you. I love you too. I love you too.